Hello and welcome to the fourth episode of Kubernetes The Hardest Way. Previous episodes, we've created the network, we've created the nodes, and we even created the TLS certificates. So the only thing left before we can actually start creating the control planes is creating cube config files to tell all the components how to communicate together. These, these files are the backbones of what the name of the cluster you're trying to access, what the user is, and what certificates that user is using to authenticate to the cluster. So let's let's get into the code and let's create one of these. So you will notice that we're back into the directory where all of our certs are defined. And you can see those here. All right. Now, what we want to do is we want to create a cube config file. Let's open up a cube config and look at it a little bit. So here is one that I made for worker zero. Um, this is certificate data and I just made it shorter. So we're gonna see it's a very easy file. There are only really three major parts. There's this version here, not a major part. Then there's these clusters. You can have multiple clusters defined here. We only define one and this is our cluster Kubernetes the hard way. Then we define a context um, with a user and the cluster. And this com context is our default context. Here we have just some very minor things, um, our preferences, which we have none, our kind, which is a config, of course. And our current context, which is the default one, which is this one right here. This is just the name, just matches up. And then we have our user, and this is the certificate that the user uses and the name of the user. Um, now, this is for a worker. So this is for the system node worker zero. This is our number one worker. And this is your cube config. You could literally write this file by hand, but luckily we have a couple of tools that makes it so that we don't have to do this. And that is very nice. So. Let's get into that. So we don't want to write this by hand. Um, and let's write, let's make the admin config for our admin. Um, this is going to be the one that if you use kubectl to get nodes or whatnot, if you were to run this, um, this is the one that you would be using. It's for your admin user. So, all right. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to run kubectl config set cluster Kubernetes the hard way. So this is the cluster we're using. And then we need to give it the certificate authority. So we'll give it the certificate authority. And since we're in this folder, I mean, it could be in a different folder, but since we're in the same folder, it's just CA PEM. And then we want to embed the certs. You don't have to do this. This makes it easy. So your cube config is a self-contained thing. Um, there's reasons in production you might not do this. But for our, it works. All right, now the server, uh, we need to point this to a server. Uh, for us, we'll t say that the server is equal to, you could do something like this. And in Kubernetes the hard way, this is how it's initially done. You do 127.0.0.1, so effectively localhost 60. 443 and that's what you do do the other thing that you can do is also point this at your external load balancer so lb0 dot example dot com uh, 6443 so this is when you're wanting to um, access it through the load balancer for right now we're only going to be working on the master nodes we're gonna leave it at just like the the kubernetes the hard way example so we'll do 127.0.0.1 6443 and then we need to give it a 
a file name and we'll do cube config equals config and this is the standard file that would be under your dot cube slash config all right so you see our cluster is set now we need to run a few more commands on this so the next one the last one was setting our cluster we're going to call config and we're going to call set credentials um, and this is going to be for our admin and we're going to give it our client our client certificate so this is our, our certificate we created for our admin user and then our client key And then we're going to embed, tell it to embed these certs. So um, we wouldn't, we can pick and choose which ones to embed. We want to embed these as well. All right. And then again, we just got to specify the file to write this to. So we want to say cube config equals config. And we messed up. This is kubectl. All right, so we set our admin user. Let's uh, go ahead and check out this file and see how what it looks like. So we can see that we have our user, our admin user. And we can see that we have our initial cluster. If you'll notice something that we're missing is what is our current context? It's not it's not defined. Um, so without this, you would have to define the context every time you wanted to run kubectl using this file. And so let's let's get that in there. So this command's pretty simple, follows the same. It's kubectl config, and then we're just going to call set context default so we're going to point towards the default context which we have to create the cluster that this default context is going to point to so cluster equals kubernetes the hard way the user that this default context is going to use that equals the admin and again the file so all right so let's let's check out the file again and now you'll notice that we have this context in here with the cluster and the user that we want to use for that cluster so we could have multiple users in here and we could have multiple clusters and we could use the different users on the clusters. So we could even have multiple users for the same cluster. All right, so now you're thinking we're done and and I would say yes, except that we actually haven't told it to use the context that we created. So this is a really simple and easy command to do. You just want to do kubectl config use context default. So we're using the default context and then quite again, you have to tell it which configuration file. If you were doing this to, um, here, let me show you this. There exists a cube config file. This is the default path for the kubectl. If we wanted to edit this file, we could leave off the, the cube config com this line. Um, so generally, if you're working on your own file that's in your path where it's supposed to be, you don't have to do this part here. The reason we're doing this is we have literally made like 12 um, 
config file. So you can see we made one for the cube controller, we made one for the cube proxy, everything that communicates uses the same type of file and with its own user. So if you look at the cat, the cube proxy dot cube config, you'll notice that the user is cube proxy. It's using its own user and this is allows us to do role based access and things like that. All right, so so this is really important because this makes managing your cube config files so much easier. And that's why I wanted to go into the cube config file and how to create and manipulate them uh, with the different commands. It's all it is is cube CTL config and we can run help and you can see the different things you can actually get called git clusters. So cube CTL config uh get clusters and let's do it on the config so again we can specify not our base config we'll do cube config equals config and these are the clusters that we have so this is a really powerful tool it's not really the hardest way because the hardest way would have been writing them by hand um they're not very big files not very hard to manipulate by hand so if we wanted to we could have gone into vim and basically copied and pasted and made all this data in here um very painfully that would have been the hardest way but uh, I thought it was very important to learn to use kubectl and not just copy and paste the commands that are given in a repository so all right, and that's it. Uh, now you can make all of the different ones. They all follow the same pattern. Uh, the only thing that you might change is what server, where they point to, um, whether you want them to be hitting the load balancer or be get hitting the local host. Um, and each one kind of changes on, on that. Um, the, the other things you'll be changing is what the user is and things like that. As you go through this um, and you're following along, I just wanted to point out where we'll be different than Kubernetes the hard way. Because we're on KVM, whenever he refers to the public IP address, this is your load balancer IP or fully qualified domain name, either one. And uh, so just be careful. That's what you want anytime that you see that. So now we're going through and making the rest of our certs. So I showed you how to do one and I spent, I think about 20 minutes creating all of the other cube config files. They all follow the same path. They all are the same methods. You can follow along very simply with the Kubernetes the hard way repo. So I won't bore you and keep you around. I uh, just thank you for joining me and I hope that uh, you learned something about cube configs and maybe a little bit about kubectl and how it can uh, help you manage your Kubernetes config file. As always, if you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button and leave me any comments on how I could make this better for you in the next video.